Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about workflow rules in Salesforce. Now workflow rules are kind of the oldest form of automation tool that we have in Salesforce. Um, they've long been improved and sometimes replaced with Process Builder and Flow. Um, but often people are still using workflow rules, uh, whether it's because of some legacy implementation or just because the person who's creating them is more familiar with workflow rules. So we're going to be covering them today, um, but please note that if you are creating any sort of automation, then the best tool that we want to be using is Flow because it is the latest one and ultimately it will be replacing workflows and process builder, which are our other two automation tools. But today we're talking about workflow rules, so let's get into it. Uh, when we create a workflow rule, there are two different types of criteria for us to take a look at. The first is the evaluation criteria and the second is the rule criteria. Now the evaluation criteria is what we choose so that we know which conditions we are going to meet to evaluate this workflow. And there are three different evaluation criteria options. The first is created. So we can evaluate this workflow when a record is created. The second is created and every time it's edited. So we can evaluate the workflow when a record is created and then every time it's edited. Or the third one is created at any time it's edited to subsequently meet criteria. So those are our three options for evaluation criteria. Just note that if we choose our second option, which is created and every time it's edited, it means that unfortunately we can't do time dependent workflow actions. Now our second criteria was the rule criteria. And the rule criteria is for under what conditions the actions are going to fire. So not under what conditions are we going to evaluate the workflow, but under what conditions are the actions going to fire. So your rule criteria can be either when a certain criteria is met or when a formula evaluates the truth. So you can use criteria based or you can use formulas. Now once we've set up our evaluation criteria, so when we're going to evaluate the workflow and our rule criteria, which is when our actions are going to fire, then we can go and have a look at what we want to happen when we actually do end up firing those actions. So in workflow, we have quite a limited number of actions to choose from. There are only four of them. And those four actions are a field update, a task, an email alert, and an outbound message. So let's take a look at each of those. A field update is obviously updating the field on a record. Creating a task, this is the only object that we can create in a workflow. And then we have an email alert, which obviously is sending out an email to a person or a user. And then we have an app by message, which is a message that goes to another platform. Now, the thing about these four actions <laughs> is that unfortunately, you cannot control the order of these actions. All right, they're actually going to go in the order that I listed them and you don't get any control over them going in another order or a custom way that you would like them to go. They'll always go field update, task, email alert, and outbound message. And a nice little acronym that I use to remember this is that fast tigers eat oranges. So F-T-E-O, and that's field updates, tasks, email alerts, and outbound messages. So that's a wrap on our workflow rules and one of the oldest forms of automation tools in Salesforce. I hope that you learned something here. It was a nice little summary for you. And if you want to check out some of our other videos on Process Builder and Flow, then please make sure you do.